Hello all, I am Dr. Prabhas Chanjanbal. In today's class, we will discuss about the discuss about Turing machine as language generator or enumerator. Okay, so in the past classes, we have already discussed about Turing machine as output generator, Turing machine as language recognizer like this. But in this class, we will discuss about what Turing machine, Turing machine as language generator, Turing machine as language generator or enumerator, or we can say it is enumerator. So what is the meaning of Turing machine as language generator? Means this is the Turing machine, this Turing machine will generate the language, will generate the language. Which types of language, means languages, uh, that are generated by the Turing machine we'll uh, discuss in later okay but Turing machine as a language recognizer or enumerator means the Turing machine will generate the languages in this case okay so now we'll see the first point the enumerators enumerators means Turing machine as language generator right the enumerators are generating the enumerators are generating collection of strings, collection of strings and keep all strings and keep all strings in an output tape. Okay. So the enumerators are generating the collection of strings and keep all strings in an output tape. All strings in an output tape where each string where each string is separated by an hash symbol. Where each string is separated by an hash symbol. For example, see, for example, this is my one of my output type. Okay. Suppose I have collab means uh, means the Turing machine will generate uh, uh, some strings just like suppose 0, 0, 1. This is one string, and this string is separated by a symbol then it will generate one strings like epsilon then separated by an hash symbol then it will generate the strings uh, like suppose one then zero hash symbol that is zero hash symbol that is one zero one like this means here the enumerators are generating the strings the generating and keep all strings like this one zero zero one epsilon 1 0 0 0 1 0 1 okay and each string is separated by an hash symbol okay so this one is the what this is the called as the enumerator right so the next point the types of language types of language is this language the types of languages generated by an enumerator the types of languages generated by an enumerator is classified into is classified into two types that is recursive language and recursive enumerable languages okay so the language generated by the turing machine is called as the two types of language generally the turing machine generated in case of uh, turing machine as a language generator this is called as one is the recursive language in short it is called as rec and the second language is called REL language or recursive enumerable language. Okay. So first one is called a recursive language. Second one is called as recursive enumerable language. Okay. Then the next point we'll see. The language generated by an enumerator, the language generated by an enumerator is nothing but the language accepted by the Turing machine. It is completely same. Then means complete same means Turing machine only accept recursive language and recursive enumerable language. So that's why the language generated by an enumerator is nothing but is nothing but the language accepted by the Turing machine. Okay. So hence the enumerator generates recursive language and real language recursive language means 
this is recursive language and real language means this is called recursive enumerable language we have already discussed about the recursive and real language in in the previous classes okay but here the recursive and real language little bit means are different okay so finally the language accepted by the turing machine is completely equal to the language generated by the enumerator okay the language generated by the enumerator is of two types that is recursive language and recursive enumerable language and the language accepted by the turing machine is called is of two types that is recursive language and recursive enumerable language okay so next we'll see about what is the meaning of recursive language see so what is the meaning of recursive language if the strings if the strings generated by an enumerator if the strings generated by an enumerator are arranged are arranged in alphabetical order or canonical order if the strings generated by an enumerator are arranged in alphabetical order or canonical order then the language then that language is called as or is known as recursive language okay so here the definition of recursive language this definition of recursive language only exist for enumerator only exist for enumerator and the recursive language and real language the definition is completely different for means uh, turing machine as a uh, language recognizer okay but in case of enumerator the definition is completely different means recursive and real language if the language or if the strings generated by the by an enumerator are arranged in alphabetical or canonical order then this language is known as what recursive language then this language is known as recursive language for example that is epsilon say here 0 1 0 0 0 1 that means epsilon is a string of length 0 0 is a string of length 1 1 is a string of length 1 0 0 is a string of length 2 0 0 1 is a string of length 3 so all strings so all strings are arranged in alphabetical order alphabetical or we can select canonical order okay so that's why this language is called a recursive language okay so next we'll see about the recursive enumerable language say about the definition of recursive enumerable language okay so what is the meaning of recursive enumerable language if the strings if the strings generated by an enumerator if the strings generated by an enumerator are arranged in an alphabetical order or canonical order or in any order okay if the strings generated by an enumerator are arranged in alphabetical order or canonical order or in any order is this then that language then that language is called as recursive enumerable language or in short it is called as real language okay so for example either in alphabetical order or in canonical order or in any order or in any order this is called as recursive enumerable language see here zero zero one is a string of length 3 0 is a string of length 1 1 1 is a string of length 2 epsilon is a string of length 0 0 0 is a string of length 2 okay so here means uh, all strings are arranged in any order here we are not followed we are not followed in a uh, in any alphabetical order or canonical order so this is the example of real okay this is the example of real what is the actually the definition see so my question is here my question is here can we means can we call this example means this example of follows real language yes because here it is also followed this one is called a recursive first one 
and this language is recursive. But this example, this example followed any recursive enumerable language or not? See, what is the definition of Arial? The definition is arranged in either alphabetical order or canonical order or in any order. But this language is also followed alphabetical or canonical order. So we can say this one is also a real language. This is the example of a real language. Okay. But this one, but this one is not followed any, but this example is not followed. The second example is not followed in any alphabetical or canonical order. So this is not REC. This is not REC. So that's why every REC language is called a real language, but every real language need not be REC. See, every REC is called Arial, but every Arial language need not be REC language. Okay, this is the main definition. Remember both definitions of both defi definitions like recursive language and a recursive enumerable language. This language, uh, this definition, this definition particularly only exists for or only valid for enumerator. In case of Turing machine as language generator or enumerator. But this, uh, the definition of recursive language and a recursive enumerable language completely different for uh, Turing machine as language recognizer, okay? So here, okay? So finally, this is the end of today's class. Uh, in the next class, we'll discuss about undecidability a reduction problem, what is the meaning of reduction problem? What is the meaning of decidable problem? What is the meaning of undecidable problem? Okay, so thanks for watching.